all are happy and healthy. Today, I want to talk about why a very iconic show and my very animated show of all time should get a reboot. Yes, I'm talking about the Penguins of Madagascar TV show. I don't know about you, but I was always a bigger fan of the show more than the movie. Although, to give the movie credit where credit is due, the Penguins movie was the first thing in the Madagascar franchise that I watched and was definitely good enough to get me interested in the whole franchise. However, I started to love the show more I started to love the show more once I watched it. Even more than that, I believe that the Penguins Madagascar TV series is the best thing that DreamWorks Animation has ever created. And after that sentence, I can already hear people saying, but what about the How to Train Your Dragon movies, and the Kung Fu Panda movies, and the Shrek movies? Okay, so those movies might be objectively better, but personally speaking, I love the Penguins Madagascar TV show more than all of those things. The show is truly my favorite thing from DreamWorks Animation, and that's one of the reasons why I want the show to come back. But there are other reasons as well, and I want to discuss those reasons with you all today. The quality of the show. So the biggest and most obvious reason I want, I believe the show should get a reboot is because The Penguins of Madagascar was just such a great show. The humor is just top notch. I'm sure all of us who watched the show at least once can think of an iconic moment from the show or something that just makes us laugh so hard that our stomach, heart, stomach hurts. The show has such great comedic timing, extremely funny jokes, and the voice actors themselves make the jokes even funnier. The characters. But it's not just about the humor. For me, the biggest reason I love this show is because of the characters. The characters are what kept me watching this show. Skipper, Kowalski, Private, and Rico. Th those four penguins are the stars of this show, both because they are the main characters and because their characters are just so well written. We get to learn more about the penguins and their personalities in this show. I love that even though Skipper is the main character, we get storylines that focus specifically on Kowalski, Rico, and Private. The Penguins make an amazing team when they are together, but they also shine individually because of their unique personalities. And again, the personalities of these characters is what I love the most. My favorite character is Skipper. It's so interesting how he's one of those strict leader types, but he's also so fun at the same time. I can't really explain it, but he kind of has a silly side to him, even though I wouldn't describe him as a silly or goofy character at all. He's just... I don't know, he's just such an amazing character. He is funny, charismatic, and brings so much life to the show. But for me, his character means even more to me than that. His character is actually an inspiration for me because I admire how brave, selfless, and heroic he is. The way he jumps into the most dangerous situations and actually loves to challenge himself and loves to just jump into the most risky situations to save the day is just so amazing to me. I wish I could be like that. He definitely inspires me to be more courageous in my own life. Also, Tom, thank you for voicing Skipper. You do such a great job with his character. I especially love his voice acting in season three. Does anyone else notice how much more playful his voice is and how much more character is just put into Skipper's voice in that season? And I absolutely adore Kowalski. He is probably my favorite character that is a scientist. I love how he has that typical scientist persona and has a very logical perspective on everything, but we also get to see other sides to his personality as well. We see that he has a little bit of a sensitive side to him, and it's really fun to see him when he gets really excited and passionate about something. I also love the voice actor for Kowalski in this show. His voice acting truly adds so much more personality into his character. I also really appreciate Private's character because he's the character that is most like me. I can relate to how sensitive and naive he can be, and I appreciate how he always tries to treat everyone with kindness. His character just adds so much to the team. Seriously, his compassionate and more sensitive nature is exactly what the team needs. Private also has more common sense than all of them sometimes, and I can tell that the other three would be lost without him. Private is just such an adorable and caring character, and I just love him. And finally, Rico. Rico just being Rico is what we all love to see. 
His character is so fun and hilarious. I'm glad that he gets more attention in this series. He's wild, impulsive, and reckless, and I love it. And he takes me by surprise with just how funny his character can be. Okay, so the next thing is the dynamic or the interactions between the lemurs and the penguins. Another big reason I love this show is because this is really the only time we see the penguins and the lemurs interact with each other. While this might not matter so much to other fans of the show, it matters a lot to me because both the lemurs and the penguins are some of my favorite characters of all time. So of course, of course I love the idea of a show featuring both groups of characters. I'm not a big fan of how Julian's character was written in this series, we'll talk about that later, but I still appreciate having both the lemurs and penguins in this show. It was fun to get a glimpse at the dynamic those two groups of characters would have with each other. The interactions with those two groups of characters, the interactions those two groups of characters had could have been even better if Julian's character was written in the same way that he was written in All Hail King Julian. But again, I'll talk about that later when I discuss my personal ideas for what I think a Penguins of Madagascar reboot should look like. And the next thing is Marlene. I also love the addition of Marlene's character. She's probably my favorite spin-off exclusive character from the franchise, with Clover from All Hail King Julian being my second favorite. The setting. I also loved how the show was set in the Central Park Zoo. Yes, I know that in real life, a zoo isn't the best place for animals, but in this fictional TV series, the zoo was like home for all of these characters. Seeing all of the animals come together and have zoo meetings in the gift shop was so fun. Plus, I enjoy these characters being in a city environment and being around humans. I loved it whenever the penguins would give their commentary on humans and how we behave. <laughs> Of course, seeing the penguins knock out a few humans to achieve their missions was also hilarious. It's lighthearted and fun. I also appreciated how this show kept a very lighthearted and fun vibe to it. Despite having some very action-packed episodes, the show never got super serious and never tried to make you cry. This show is just pure fun and comedy. It has some of that same humor and wacky shenanigans that are present in the Madagascar movies. This is the perfect show to watch when you need something to put a smile on your face. Trust me, you cannot not smile when you see these amazing penguins that are able to outsmart humans and save the day and have fun while doing so. Overall, this was a show with amazing characters, excellent comedy, and had so much clever and it had so much clever and fun writing, and that is one reason why this show deserves a reboot. The next thing is that we never got a proper ending or an official goodbye to the characters. Another reason why this show needs to come back is because we never got a proper ending to the show or an official goodbye to the characters. I love a lot of things about All Hail King Julian, and one of those things is how the show had a proper ending. I really appreciated the very sweet friendship moments between all the main characters in the last episode. The last episode also explained why Clover wasn't there in the first Madagascar movie, and by the end of All Hail King Julian, so many of the overarching storylines get resolved. Uncle King Julian was no longer trying to take over the kingdom because he found love. He, uh, Carl, another one of Julian's nemesis, or an enemies was um, he retired from being Julian's enemy. <laughs> Clover Mary Sa married Sage, and there are plenty of other examples. However, in the Penguin show, the only thing that got resolved was that Skipper was finally able to erase his criminal records in Denmark, and Kowalski and Doris finally got together. But that was about it. We don't know if the Penguins would have decided to leave the zoo at the end of the series, and we did not get a proper goodbye to these characters. There was still a lot that I wanted to see happen before the series ended, and I will talk about that next as I discuss my ideas for a Penguins of Madagascar reboot. My idea for the reboot. Okay, so there are several things I would like for the Penguins of Madagascar TV show to do differently if it were to get a reboot, but let's start with the things I wouldn't change. I would keep the Penguins of Madagascar TV series at the Central Park Zoo because, as I said before, I really do enjoy that setting for the series. I would also keep all of the main characters in the show. I obviously want to see more of these amazing penguins just being themselves, but I also want the show to bring back the lemurs and Marlene. 
I also want to see some of the familiar antagonists in the series, such as Dr. Blowhole, Hans, Officer X, Clemson, and so on. And of course, I want this show to be just as fun and hilarious as the original. However, here are a few ideas to make an incredible show even better. So the first thing is 22 minute long episodes. The first thing that the reboot should do differently is to have 22 minute long episodes rather than 11 minute episodes. I guess it doesn't really make that much of a difference how long the episodes are. I, w I mean, I would take 11 minute episodes over no episodes at all. But if the show were to get a reboot, there's no telling how many seasons it would get. So just in case you would only get like one very short season, it would be better for the episodes to be longer so we can get more of the penguins even with less episodes. Also, while the 11 minute episodes usually tell a really fun story like 80% of the time, I do find that there are a few episodes of the show that would have been better if they were longer and could have had time to develop the story more. That's why I believe that the episodes for the reboot should be 22 minutes long. The second thing is to move away from Nickelodeon and be a Netflix series instead. The next thing I think the reboot should do differently is that instead of DreamWorks, cre DreamWorks creating it with Nickelodeon, they need to make it a Netflix original series instead, just like they did with All Hail King Julian. As I've been watching a lot of Nickelodeon lately, I noticed a very big problem with that network. They treat their good shows like trash and barely air them on their channel. Basically, they sabotage most of their own shows, and those shows end up getting canceled way too soon. Knowing what I know about the network, it's no surprise that the Penguin, sh the Penguin show got canceled without a proper ending. I don't want the reboot to get the same treatment, so I think that DreamWorks needs to make it an original series for Netflix instead. The third thing is that they need to fix King Julian's character. The next thing is something I already hinted at before. Yes, I'm talking about King Julian's character in this series. That would be like my one and only criticism of this show. DreamWorks, how is it that you were able to make Julian such an amazing character in All Hail King Julian, but then you tried your absolute best to ruin his character in this series? Like, really, I don't understand why they would take one of the greatest protagonists of this franchise and make him practically unlikable here. Now, in theory, it is an interesting idea to take a protagonist in one part of the franchise and try to make them an anti-hero in another part of the franchise. However, the way they attempted to do that with Julian's character here just wasn't it. Some of you might say that it would be better if Julian just wouldn't be in the reboot at all. And that's where I would disagree with you because, again, I want to see more interaction between Julian and the Penguins. I think that's part of what makes this show special is that it, it's really the only part of the franchise where the lemurs and penguins say more than two sentences to each other. From what I've seen in the show, I know that the, the lemurs and the penguins could have had a really great dynamic with each other if not for the way Julian's character was written in this series. Also, it's just plain disrespectful for them to try and ruin such a great character like like Julian in this series, so they need to make up for it by making Julian's character better in this hypothetical reboot that may never happen. <laughs> okay, here's one of my ideas on how to improve Julian's character on the Penguins of Madagascar TV series. There is a summary of the show which describes Julian as an unwelcome challenge to the Penguins' dominance at the zoo. What if, that, what if that would refer to the fact that the penguins are the main problem solvers at the zoo and then all of a sudden King Julian comes along? And rather than making Julian this selfish, narcissistic, self-proclaimed king that doesn't care too often about anyone but himself, rather than that, what if they decided to actually have Julian be a character that truly wants to help others and tries to use his previous legit experience as king to solve the various problems that happen within the zoo? And then, because the Penguins and Julian have very different philosophies as to how those problems should be solved, that could be where the main conflict between the lemurs and the Penguins come from. Because if you watch the show, the Penguin show, you'll see that a lot of the time, some of the episodes, a lot of the episodes feature this conflict where Julian is causing trouble for the Penguins and all that sort of stuff. Um, but I think that this is, a, what I was just talking about, is a much better way to produce conflict between these two groups of characters than just simply ruining and exaggerating Julian's character. Julian has a very unorthodox way of leadership. 
yes, Julian does need Maurice to stop him from implementing some of his extremely wild ideas, but a lot of the time, his unusual style of leadership does prove to work. For example, in the first episode of season five of All Helking Julian, Julian actually pretends to be dead in order to bring his people together and stop all of the chaos. Of course, it sounds very ridiculous, and Maurice certainly didn't like that idea, but you have to admit that it did work and it did solve the problem. In addition to some of his ideas for improving his kingdom being very outside of the box, Julian also prefers to do things in a fun way if it is possible to do so. Meanwhile, Skipper, as well as the other penguins, have a more practical and orderly way of leadership. He has years of training and he's very strict about sticking to that. While he does act on instinct when necessary, Skipper seems to have very little tolerance for doing something that is super outside of the box. These differences, as well as the other differences that they have, should have been the main reason why there is so much conflict between the penguins and the lemurs. Instead of having Julian be so selfish, they should have made Julian want to help and contribute to making the zoo a better place just as much as Skipper wants to. But then Skipper and the other penguins try to stop him, forcing Julian to go against their wishes so that he can help out. And maybe sometimes the solutions to help the situation or help another zoo animal backfires, and then that could also cause more conflict between the penguins and the lemurs, where the penguins use the times where Julian's ideas don't work as an excuse to say, that, to say that he has no idea of how to be a leader or solve situations, which would really hurt Julian because Julian truly does care about being a good leader and helping those around them. And again, all helping Julian proves this is true. This idea gives the show a way to make conflict between the two groups make sense without making Julian the bad guy. And in order to start resolving this conflict, there could be some moments where both Julian and Skipper realize that sometimes a different approach to doing things is necessary. Throughout the series, the lemurs and the penguins can learn to see each other's point of view and have more respect for each other's unique strengths when it comes to leadership, allowing the two to team up in order to keep the zoo happy and healthy. I seriously wish that this is the direction that the penguin show would have went in i know you might be wondering why am i wasting my time with this if i want to see julian at his best i can watch all hilk and julian and not worry about how his character is portrayed in the penguin series i feel so strongly about how his character was written in the penguin series specifically because i think that this idea that i have been talking about had massive potential and i truly wanted the penguins to meet and get to know the real julian not the flanderized version of him Believe it or not, I could talk even more about Julian's character and how he could have been better in this series, so I might make a separate video on that. The next thing is more romance subplots. Okay, the next thing I want to see more of in The Penguin Show, if it gets a reboot, is more romance-focused storylines. I know that some of my aromantic friends won't like that idea so much, and that's completely okay. And it's not like this show has to have every episode be about romance, even though I even I think that's going too far. However, I feel like this show was hinting at two major ships, Skipper and Marlene, and Marlene and Julian, but the show never seriously explored them. I know a lot of us used to and probably still do ship Marlene and Skipper. And while I know that there are some that want Skipper and, and Marlene to remain friends and not add romance to their relationship, I also think it would have been interesting if Skipper and Marlene would have indeed started dating. Obviously, there are other ships that people have from this show, but I'm not going to go in details about ships today. I'm just saying that it would be nice if one of the main characters had a love interest. Yes, I know we got Kowalski and Doris, but I wanted another one of the main characters to get a love interest as well. More friendship moments. Now, let's just forget about romance and talk about friendship because I really just want more friendship moments within this show, mainly between the lemurs, the penguins, and Marlene. I want to see more moments where all nine of them are hanging out together like they do at the end of the episode sometimes. I know that the penguins are super close with each other, but I also wanted each of the penguins to develop a deeper friendship with someone outside of their penguin group. It would have been nice if we got to see more friendship moments with Skipper and Marlene or Marlene and Kowalski. I also feel like Maurice would, would be good friends with Kowalski since, they're, since they are the two smartest characters in their respective groups. And Maurice and Marlene would also be good friends, I think, if given more of a chance to hang out with each other. 
Also, I feel like the show was trying to do this whole enemies to friends thing with Skipper and Julian. I can see why the two weren't very close because once again, the way they wrote Julian's character in this series made it hard for really anyone to be his friend. However, if they fix Julian's character in the reboot and write him the way that they did in Help and Julian, then I think a true friendship between the two of them would happen. I think Skipper as a fellow leader would have a lot more respect for Julian if he knew how good of a king Julian really was in All Hell King Julian. Skipper and Clover, while not the exact same, have very similar personalities. If Clover and Julian could be such good friends despite their differences, then so could Julian and Skipper. Also, I could totally see Smart Mort. Basically, Mort becomes like Kowalski level smart when he drinks coffee. That was revealed in All Hell King Julian. And it would be really great to see Smart Mort and Kowalski bonding and like doing science experiments together or something like that. Although, if the penguins find out that Mort is practically evil, and again, that's something that All Hell King Julian revealed. So watch All Hell King Julian if you want to know more. But I think that if the penguins find out that Mort is practically evil, then they would probably want to avoid Mort. They would probably want to avoid Mort at all costs. But then again, Skipper. But then again, Skipper might want to use Mort's powers, such as his ability con to consume souls. Yes, he can do that. But anyway, Skipper might want to use Mort's powers to like again to like to fight against his arch enemies or something like that. So I don't know. It, there's so many possibilities, and it would just be so interesting to see the penguin's reaction to who Mort truly is. <laughs> Anyways, these are just a few examples, but yes, I want to see more friendship moments between all of these characters. The next thing is that the reboot should have better animation. And the last thing that I think will make the reboot even better than the original is to, well, have better animation. The animation in the original never bothered me that much, and I appreciate how the show's animation at least improved a little bit each season. However, if they could improve the animation even more, then that would be amazing. So yeah, those are my ideas for the Penguins of Madagascar reboot and my thoughts on why the show should come back. What are your ideas for a reboot of the Penguins of Madagascar TV show? Please let me know. As I've said before, I just really want this show to come back because I love it so much and the show means a lot to me. All nine of the main characters in this series make me so happy and some of the characters like Skipper inspire me to be a better person. I think there were so many different storylines that the show could have explored if given a chance to continue so I really hope it gets that chance. Again, let me know what your thoughts about this topic are in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to love yourself and be kind to everyone. Bye!